It's Oscar season, and that means controversy. Guys, I'm sorry. No, there's a mistake. This, there's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won Best Picture. And that's not quite what I meant. <laughs> oh, wow! Uh, I'm reading the nomination list. I've not even heard of half of these movies. Uh, there we go. Absolutely a horrible movie. <laughs> and, it's, and it's nominated <laughs> yes. for all these awards. Anadarmus, I love you. But Blonde was one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Why in the world was this movie nominated for an Oscar? But seriously, why does it seem to happen every single year? Aside from the fact that people have different tastes. You should have got Oscar. Oh, well, you know, it's just to be nominated. You were nominated? No, 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 I wasn't nominated. I'm just saying that to have been nominated would have been nice. It's just, it's very political. You have to take out ads. It's so political and obviously not in the true political sense, but Hollywood politics are very intricate. Every industry has its politics, but Hollywood's award season is more like the road to the White House than lobbying for the best parking spot at the office. Here's how movies you've never heard of get nominated for top awards. Marketing. Marketing, super, super. Starting around November, studios go on spending sprees to score nominations. Sometimes the way you do that is with a for your consideration ad, and that can be in the trade papers. That's, that's a big one, because if you look through Variety, The Hollywood Reporter, or even online with The Wrap or Deadline, any of the big trades for Hollywood, it's really like speaking to that in-house crowd and it's a big business. You have to start on the road. It's as long as a presidential campaign. You're out, so you have to have money to go to the festivals. You have to have money to go to, uh, you, you know, Palm Springs where all the older people in the academy are. You have to be able to have the lunches. You have to, you know, I mean, this goes on. People have to be available for months and someone has to pay for that. Also, you have to have a Harvey Weinstein or somebody behind you. Whoa, that last reference didn't age well. I did it get We nominated. want to talk to Marilyn Hack. Anyway, it's a lot of money. Not presidential election levels of money that hit more than 14 billion in 2020, but a lot of money. There's no federal election commission or campaign spending laws, so studios don't have to report exactly what they spend. But according to Variety, for the 2015 Oscars race for Best Picture, small studios shelled out as much as three million per flick while larger studios could spend as much as 10 million to lobby for the honor of being nominated. Heck, even sending out watermark screeners to voters could run up 300 grand. Sticking with our election analogy, if the Academy Awards are the general election, the Golden Globes, Guild Awards, and even People's Choice can be seen as somewhat of a primary. So people don't like to vote for something that they feel like their vote would be wasted. Of course, it's not always about the film as a whole. When it comes to individual awards like Best Actor, studios craft a whole story around that. So creating a narrative for an act, around an actor uh, while they're in contention or for consideration, that's very interesting. I mean, Paul Giamatti has been really everywhere, big screen and small screen promoting the holdovers. There was a picture of him after the Golden Globes going to In-N-Out Burger. I don't think that was any mistake. I think that was just a way to get him out there. That went viral. The Academy does have some specific rules about how to lobby your film, but the social media age has muddied the waters a bit. Last year, Andrea Riseborough got a long shot Oscar nod for Best Actress. Her manager and the director's wife enlisted their famous friends to get the word out on to Leslie. That included an intimate reception at the director's home. After the ask, Edward Norton and Gwyneth Paltrow were among those who took to social media to applaud Riseborough's performance. After hearing about the fishiness, the Academy launched an investigation into the grassroots campaign. Ultimately, they let Riseboro keep her nomination, but said the campaign tactics caused concern. Award shows have often been characterized as people in the entertainment industry patting themselves on the back. And to a certain extent, that's by design. It's, it's sort of a dog and pony show for everybody else in the industry. And if you're, if you're a studio and you're really putting yourself out there Putting, spending a lot of money on ads, getting out screeners and, and other promotions, then talent will look to that studio and say, they do a really good job of getting my movie out there. After years of criticism about Best Picture nominees being indie dramas that no one ever sees, 
The Academy expanded the category to 10 nominees and has been throwing some big budget blockbusters you've actually seen in the mix. Of course, this year, everyone's expecting Barbie and Oppenheimer, Barbenheimer, to both be nominated for Best Picture. So there you've got in just domestic box office close to a billion dollars. That's a lot of people who saw both of those movies have a vested interest in watching an awards show that has both of them in contention. It was an honor just to be almost nominated.